Hello everyone, in this video we are going to learn about Blazor WebAssembly. This is the first video of a series of videos that I'm planning to do on Blazor and this video has three parts. First, we are going to understand what Blazor WebAssembly is. After that, we are going to create our first application. And finally, we are going to add the application that we created to a source control and then we are going to release it with Azure Static Web Apps. Now let's understand what Blazor WebAssembly is. Blazor WebAssembly is a single page application framework just like Angular, React. The importance here is that you can develop front ends with your familiar language C Sharp. This is much easier if you are already familiar with Razor syntax from ASP.NET. Even though we can use C Sharp for developing the front ends, we don't need any special libraries or plugins to run this on your browser. The C Sharp code that you write will get interpreted into WebAssembly underneath. And WebAssembly is a, another web standard like HTML and JavaScript. So it works on all browsers. And there are two main frameworks, Blazor WebAssembly and Blazor Server. In the upcoming videos, I am planning to do a few videos on Blazor Server as well, but we are going to start with Blazor WebAssembly. So what's the difference here? As you can see on the left, we have Blazor WebAssembly and on the right, we have the architecture of Blazor Server. When it comes to Blazor WebAssembly, the event handlers for your DOM events will get executed right in your browser. As you can see, we have WebAssembly in the technology stack. But when it comes to Blazor Server, the event handlers for your DOM events will be ASP.NET Action Methods. Basically, there will be WebSocket connections established from the front end of your application to the back end so that all the events will be transferred to the back end ASP.NET Core application and the result will be transferred back to the browser. To host a Blazor WebAssembly application, you just need a static file hosting service like Azure Static Web Apps. But to host an application that you have written with Blazor Server, you need a back end intelligent web application server like Azure App Services. And we are going to start with Blazor WebAssembly first and we are going to focus on Blazor Server later. And what is Blazor? How did the term get created? It is Browser plus Razor. If you are familiar with Razor language, this is how it looks basically. And Blazor is Razor syntax on the browser. And should you use it in your next project? And why should you do it? If you are already familiar with .NET stack and C Sharp language and that is a plus point, and also if you want to develop a enterprise level application with object oriented organized code. If you have a need to reuse the C Sharp libraries that you already written for your backends in your frontends, this is an option for you. And finally, Blazor has all the features for developing SP apps. As you can see on the screen, Blazor has all the features that you need for developing a complete single page application. It has a component based architecture and routing just like in Angular or React. This supports data binding, form management, client server backend communications, also dependency injection plus JS interrupts as well. Meaning that you can write JavaScript code and you can invoke that code with your C Sharp Blazor application. Now that we have completed the first step, introduction to Blazor, let's go ahead and create our first Blazor application. I'm in my Visual Studio. The version is 2022. The first thing that we should do is creating a new project. You can create the new project using .NET CLI as well and you can use Visual Studio Code to develop your project as well. But in this series of videos, I will be focusing on Visual Studio Community version. In Create New Project window, I can search for WebAssembly and we have the WebAssembly template. Click Next. Let me change the directory and I'm going to call it Courses App. Go Next. I'm going to go with .NET 6 and then I'm going to create the application. And in coming videos, I will be focusing on this as well. I'm going to create the application now. All right, as you can see, our first project is ready now. If we go into courses, as you can see here, we have a .NET 6 application. And now if we go into program.cs, as you can see, we don't have a class and we are going to focus on this one by one later. And then we have app.razor. This is the root level routing component. As you can see, we have two sections here. 
if Blazor could find the route that we are in, it will display the actual data and otherwise it will display this message here. And then we have a set of global imports and then we have shared razor files and three pages as you can see. We have a counter and fetch data and an index. And here we have www root as you can see we have a set of images and css files no razor files here because these are just static files you can put your images and css files in www root folder and finally we have launch json file we can specify the launch configurations here we have three configurations courses app iis express and wsl for linux environments and we can see those listed here as well. I'm going to select Courses app and if you want, for example, hot reload support, you can add it here. Like this, as you can see. Now let's run this application and see how it works. I'm going to go with start without debugging so that hot reloading works for this Blazor app. All right, as you can see, our first Blazor app is running now. Let me hide Solution Explorer and I'm going into the index.razor file. If I do a change here and I'm going to save it now. As you can see, it is getting hot reloaded. In this video, we are not going to learn much about Razor syntax, but in coming videos, we are going to learn much more. But for this video, let me do a change like this. I'm going to add a paragraph tag and then I'm going to move it to that. Let me add a new button as well. All right. Now let me create an event handler for this button. For that, you can add your backend code like this. All right. Now let me create a variable here. It's going to be a private variable and a string. I'm going to call it message. It's going to be a empty string for now. And then I'm going to create a method. I'm going to call it clicked. And in that method, I'm going to update the message and that is going to be this message here. I'm going to save it. All right, now using Razor syntax, I'm going to invoke this c -sharp method here when I click the button. For that, I'm going to use at sign and on click event. On that event, I'm going to invoke clicked method like this. And then I'm going to display the changed message inside of the paragraph tag. All right, like this. Now let me press Ctrl S. Now if I click on this button, we are seeing the message. And this is our first Blazor application. Now that we have a Blazor application, let's deploy this to an Azure static web app. For that, I'm going to create a new repository on GitHub. Let me do that now. Here, I'm going to call it Blazor Courses App and you will be able to find this repository. I will put the link down below. This repository will contain everything that we do in the upcoming videos as well. It's going to be a public repository. As you can see, I'm going to create this. Now it's time for me to add the code to the repo. Let me do that now. As you can see, I have just added the Courses App to GitHub. The next thing, the final thing that I'm going to show you is how to deploy that application using an Azure static web app. For that, I'm going to my Azure portal and I'm going to create a new resource and then I'm going to search for static web apps. Click create. We need to specify a resource group. I'm going to call my new resource group courses app RG and then name. All right. Hosting plan. I'm going to keep this as a free application. Azure Static Web Apps are not a regional service, it is a global service. But we can specify a region for Azure Functions API. But for this set of videos, I'm not going to use it. But anyway, I'm going to keep this as Central US. And here we can configure the deployment details. First, we need to sign in to my GitHub account. Let me do that now. All right. I have signed in. Now let me set the organization, repository and the branch. As you can see, it's going to be my organization and the repository is Blazor Courses App and that is what we have created here. And then the branch is going to be the main branch. 
the build details, we can specify the type of application that we are deploying here. Since this is a Blazor WebAssembly application, I'm going to go with Blazor. And finally, we can specify the app location. Basically, that is the folder of my Git repository where my application contains. That is courses app. Let me change that to courses app. I don't have any API location and output location. I'm going to keep this as it is. All right, I'm going to create this application. All right, as you can see, the deployment is complete now. Now, if I go into the resource and we have the URL for it and the source control and deployment history. If you click here, you will be redirected to GitHub Actions page. And here, as you can see, we have the action running. It's complete now. I'm going back to Azure portal and let's click on this URL here. As you can see, we have deployed our first Blaze application to an Azure static web app. This is the first video of a series of videos that I'm planning to do on Blazor, Blazor WebAssembly and Blazor Server. And I will be covering all these concepts in coming videos. If you have any further questions or comments, let me know down below. And don't forget to like this video and subscribe if you learned something new today and thanks for watching.